Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to joining me for today's, I'm calling it kind of like a story session uh, where we're going to be exploring. I'm going to be sharing with you some of the biggest business mistakes that I've made where I've made financial investments and it really felt spiritually aligned and it turns out it was not. <laughs> turns out it didn't work in my favor. It turns out I didn't really get anything that I thought that I would from it. Um, this, uh, it feels like quite a vulnerable share. It's quite an open story and part of it is uncomfortable because I'm going to be sharing with you some of the ways that I spend money in my business. And that usually in the past, in the past paradigm of how we work with money is something that we keep fairly quiet, whether it's our personal finances or our business finances. And as part of my journey of changing the narrative around abundance, prosperity, and money, it feels really important that I share this with you today. So all these butterflies that are in my stomach right now, I know that that is there on purpose for a good reason, meaning that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So if you are here with me live, go ahead, comment in, share with me, how are you feeling today? What's going on in your heart? What's going on in your body? How are you feeling before we dive into this story together? I'm just going to do a quick check on all the social media things. Make sure that you guys can see and hear me okay. I see Carrie's here. Hi, Carrie. Good morning to you. Let's see here. How fun that we have multiple devices to teach us all the things. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Mm -mm. And Devin's here. Good morning, Devin. Good morning, Ashley. Awesome. Okay. I can see you guys are here. So for those of you who are watching the replay, you know what to do. Hashtag replay. Let me know that you're coming in to tune in so that I can come back and hang out with you when you're here. <sighs> Feeling motivated and content. Devin, I'm so happy to hear that. That's wonderful. Motivated and content. You're moving forward and you're good. And that's a beautiful place to be. I love it. So today we're talking about business mistakes that I personally have made that felt really spiritually aligned. And there's a lot that I want to cover. So I actually took time yesterday to write it all out and get clear on what, what it is that I'm really here to share with you and why this is important. So I have it typed up on my computer. So you might see me, my eyeballs looking around. I'm going to go through and not read it, but have it there as a little guidance for me. Okay. I'm just going to dive right in. Are you guys ready? If you're if you're here with me, I know I can't see you, but I want you to put your hands all the way up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Ah, give me some little spirit fingers up there. And then exhale, release. Ah. Just allow yourself to arrive. Let yourself show up here. If you can, let go of what's going on outside of you. Let go of what's going on outside in other rooms, outside of your building, outside of your home, wherever you are, and just arrive here. And let yourself feel yourself in my story. Because all of us, while they look, while our stories look different, they're all the same. They have the same principles, the same teachings, the same guidance. Allow yourself to be held in this vision of my story so that we can change this narrative together. Okay. And as we go through, I really want you to continue commenting in with me, whether replay or watching with me live, because it makes it so much more fun for me. So I have my phone here so I can see all of your comments coming in with your names, which is a big win for everybody. And let's get started. So right off the bat, I'm just going to dive right in. So far in the year of 2020, I have committed to investing over $20,000 into my business. And this is through a variety of different trainings, learning new healing modalities that I can then offer to my clients, bringing in business coaching so that I can reach more people, having personal coaching so that my emotions, my energy, all aspects of who I am can be served and held and supported while I'm doing that for my clients. It's really important to me that I have this kind of support around me. And it's something that I dedicated from the very first day I started my business, that I will always make sure that I personally am supported. So $20,000 is a fair amount of money. It's a lot of money. And I'm truly 
honored that I'm able to invest that money into my business and in turn into myself as well. And one of the things that I love is that when women work with me, they're not only receiving who I am in this moment, moment, but who I become as we work together as well, because I'm continuously deepening into my teachings, my learnings, my coachings, etc. So they get to keep having that evolved version of me as their support. So it's really important to me. In the past few years, I have spent far more than that investing into my business, investing into coaching programs, investing into trainings, into retreats, conferences, all sorts of things for the same reasons. But something changed this year that I didn't even notice was off before. Previously, when I would spend money, I would not get any joy out of it. I would not receive anything that I thought that I wanted from it. It was just like... It was like I was just throwing money out and then sitting here racking my head, pulling my hair out of my head, asking why, why am I spending all this money? It feels so easy for me to do so. And yet I'm getting nothing in return. It was just, ugh, I'm going to describe it a little bit further for you in a moment, but it was not comfortable for me. So I just want to describe to you what my money investment decision-making process was, okay? So mm, good morning, Brittany. Good morning, good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Ashley. Mm, grand risings, Ashley says. I love that. <laughs> so my money-making decision-making process was I would be given an offer or an opportunity or I'd come across a program or a course or something that was intriguing to me and I felt like, ooh, I really want that. I think that would really benefit me or my clients. And something would happen to put me into that decision-making mode. Of course, I would instantly consult my intuition and I would allow my intuition to guide me. I'm an intuitive life coach. This is a big component of how I've chosen to live my life for the past five plus years. I made, as I mentioned before, I made a decision very early on that if I was going to ask people to spend money on hiring me as their coach and investing in themselves in that way, that in terms of being in integrity, I better be willing to do that same thing. And usually when you hire a coach to support you, it's someone who's maybe like a couple steps or, or quite a few steps ahead of where you are in the moment, meaning they've embodied something that you desire for yourself. So they have education or knowledge or embodiment of something that you're craving to bring into your life. That's why you're drawn to them. That's why you're attracted. That's what you bring in for yourself. So for me, hiring these coaches tended to be a lot of money <laughs> because that was also something that I wanted was to feel more free in my own money story. So I actually grew up, I don't know if you guys would have heard this. I think I shared it in a podcast episode probably last year, but I grew up being incredibly frugal. I was so cheap. There's this story of my, my really good friend in university where I came home from university one day and I said, guess what? I didn't, I only spent $2 today and I'm so proud of myself. And I'd gone to Tim Hortons and got myself one coffee for the day. And that's the only amount of money that I'd spent. And that was the one thing out of my entire day that I prided myself on was that I only spent $2 and nothing more. So I was like, I was super cheap. I was super frugal and I was really proud of it. I loved that about myself. So when it came to being able to spend thousands of dollars on hiring coaches, it was definitely a, a process of me getting comfortable spending money and investing it. But it became easier when I realized the immense value that I and my clients received from investing in, in personal development and spiritual growth and spiritual awakenings. I started to see the benefits of it. So I was like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll invest. No problem. So I started to shift this narrative within me that I was comfortable spending money and sometimes large amounts of money. So when those opportunities came and sales pitches were made to me and I was deciding yes or no, what I would do is look to the vision of me having completed that program or that course or that whatever it was. And I would ask, how does it look and feel? Okay. Now, another thing that you need to know about me is that since I was a little girl, I've always had a vision of myself on stage speaking to thousands of people. When I was quite young and really severely bullied and my dad worried that I was suicidal, the only reason that I never even thought about going down that path was because then, but who would talk to the people on stage then? That was my thought process. So I've had this, this like mm, feeling inside of me my entire life that I have a deep profound purpose here. And it has to do with my voice and speaking it to others. With that, I've also always wanted to be rich. 
I've wanted to be insanely popular. I mean, I think that stems a bit from being bullied as a kid, but I wanted everyone to like me always. I've always wanted everyone to like me. I've wanted to be rich, well-known, popular, super successful, and feel so ridiculously proud of myself and my business. That's something that I've always wanted for myself. It's something that I've always just felt myself drawn into. So when it came to the question, here's a specific example of money I invested. When it came to the question of Deanna, would you like to invest 4,000 American dollars into this organic Instagram marketing campaign where these two incredible women from Bali are going to set up this whole system. You're going to receive so many clients from it. You're going to become so popular. You're going to get a huge following on Instagram and you're going to make a ton of money working with them as one-on-one -on -one clients. Do you want to invest 4,000 American dollars into this? I went through my decision-making process, connect with my intuition. Okay. Connect into that vision of myself having completed. You mean I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be proud of myself. I'm going to be popular. I'm going to be well-known like hundred percent. Yes. I'm going to say a hard yes to that one. Let's do this. And at the time, $4,000 was the most amount of money I had ever invested at once. And it terrified me. But I remember thinking to myself, if I want to, like, if I want to play in the big leagues, I got to play in the big leagues, right? Like I got to invest some big money into this. And so I did it. I invested and the marketing campaign occurred and these women did the work. They set it all up. They did all the things that they said they were going to do and not one single person wanted to work with me. Not a single person. I was having daily conversations with probably like 20, 25 different women online through Instagram. We were sending videos back and forth, voice notes back and forth. We were connecting regularly. I was putting in a ton of work and not a single person wanted to work with me. Not a single person out of probably hundreds. And I was, I was thinking, why is this happening? Why does, why is this not in alignment? And my first immediate thought was, of course, I got to blame these girls. I mean, they're the ones who sold me this program and I'm not getting what I want from it. But when I thought about it, they hadn't done anything wrong. They literally delivered on every single deliverable they said that they would. And so I couldn't even get mad at them. I couldn't even blame them. Couldn't go into victim mode in that way. So what do you think that did for my level of personal confidence? business confidence, coaching confidence. As someone who already was just trying to come out of this fragile vision of myself of, I just want to be rich. I want to be successful. I want to be popular. I want to be liked. I want to have an impact. I want to make a difference. And here I am having this opportunity to connect with so many individuals and not a single person, not a single person even cared even wanted to work with me. All they wanted was their, they took the free session, no problem. And then from there, nothing. I was so broken. Like I, I could cry right now thinking about how much this pained me. And that 4,000 4, American dollars that I had spent, I felt so broke. <laughs> like I felt broken and broke that I had made such a stupid, foolish decision that now I was out thousands of dollars, had nothing to show for it and was exhausted and felt so inadequate with myself as a business owner. It was, it was a really hard time. And I'm wondering, can you, pa thank you, Pamela. Pamela says, I've been there too. Can you relate to this, whether or not through business, but can you relate to that feeling of just like, it never came to the point of regret, but it was very close on the verge of regret that I made a stupid decision and I had no one to blame for it, but myself. Can anyone else relate to that? Can you comment in and share with me just so that I just need a moment to gather myself? Mm. <laughs> I have so much compassion inside of me for that, that version of Deanna who wanted so desperately to have that impact, who wanted so desperately to make it happen. And even the idea that this marketing campaign was organic. It wasn't about buying leads. It wasn't about buying followers. It was truly organic. And yet still, even that I couldn't make work. Even that I couldn't figure out. Even that I couldn't become successful with. It was like every single thing that I freaking tried in my business just wouldn't move me forward, wouldn't allow me to have the impact that I wanted. No matter how much money I invested, no matter how many things I tried, it, I just couldn't make it happen. And I just like wanted to slap myself silly all the time. Why can't you figure it out? What is wrong with you? This was my dialogue. It was really intense. 
Brittany, I've definitely been there. Devin, 100%. Carrie, not a stupid decision. Does it have to do with expectations? Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, Carrie. We're going to keep going. Pamela, lots of love. And Carrie, I've done this. I've done that too, four years at university. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about another time that I invested even more money and came out of it feeling quite terrible. Uh, Monica, does a $40,000 master's degree count? <laughs> okay. Yes, of course it does. And I'm glad that you guys are on the same page with me, not because I want you to have gone through this, but because it feels really nice to know that we can see each other in each other's stories. And my heart just feels <sighs> held within that. So uh, I think a year later, I had the opportunity to invest over $10,000 American into a program. And when I thought about this program, when I thought about the deliverables that I would receive from it when I thought about what I would learn and experience and and get from this program when I connected into that version of myself having completed this program it was 100% a yes it was a hell yes this is what I want it would get me way more visible online it would get me speaking in so many new places it would allow me to really just like hone my ability to impact others through my words which as I shared with you was that vision that I had since I was in grade six and it just sounded so fun and the person that I would be working with was someone that I loved that I admired that I wanted to be my mentor and so when I when I felt into that I was like well yeah of course I'm going to invest over ten thousand dollars American money into this experience because this is exactly what I want <clears throat> so I signed up and then I proceeded to miss every single group call simply because I didn't put in my calendar simply because I just didn't take the time to get myself set up properly so that I could know when the calls were I just didn't even show up I didn't even engage I was completely disengaged from the content I was so freaking resistant to the coaching everything that was suggested to me I basically was like no I that's not me that doesn't feel true to me that's not who I am that's not what my people want that's not what everyone who follows me want to hear no 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 hard no mm -mm. So here I was investing all this freaking money into something that my whole being was like, no. And I was getting nothing out of it because of it. And every single month that money came out of my account and went somewhere else. All I wanted to do was yell at this person. How can you take my money when I'm not even getting anything from this? How can you be in this situation when I'm not receiving what I need from this? And again, I went into this place of Maybe I'm not supposed to be a business owner. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in charge of making these decisions. Maybe I'm inadequate at, at, at being someone who can make a difference in other people's lives through a form of business. Maybe I'm destined to be a, a broke hippie who just can't figure it out, who just can't do these things. And it was really that one was even more devastating because I had done a lot of work up till that point with my money narrative with my thoughts around money. I constantly was working on this and investing that money felt like the right thing to do. And I wasn't getting anything from it. I was feeling empty inside. I was feeling like everybody else that was in the program was loving it. They were so happy. They were celebrating all of these wins. They were just like on cloud nine. And I was sitting here like, oh, oh my God, stop celebrating. Like some of us aren't having that success and just do you know what I mean? Do you guys get it? Do you know that feeling? You know, those like inner thoughts that we have, those inner judgments, those self-defeating victim thoughts, you know, that that's where I was. It was hard. It was hard. Pamela shared, um, I just did the math from 2011 to date, over $108,000 on courses. So abundant. That's such a beautiful amount of money to spend. Wow. And Carrie, that has happened to me recently. Interesting. And then Pamela said, I felt like I was on a hamster wheel for so long. Shiny dime dimension. But now I see it as abundant. Yes, that is a really beautiful switch that you've created there. I love that. And yeah, I think that a lot of us can really relate to that shiny dime concept of like, ooh, something shiny, ooh, something shiny. And that's what I really started to understand about myself is when I considered that vision of me having completed this program, having made that investment, having received all of this abundance and wisdom and guidance, I saw that vision of me as someone who belonged. I had 
I had this, this beautiful platform of individuals that I could communicate with and impact. I had all of these clients that I got to, that I got the opportunity to work with every day. I was liked and loved by many people. I was feeling so successful. I was feeling proud of myself and my business. I felt proud of myself as a business owner. I felt important. I felt like my words mattered. I felt this is all this vision that I saw is, is this was the version of me that had this big impact. She was abundant. She was joyful. She was impactful. She was all of these things that I wanted. And every time I invested in any of these programs, that was what I wanted to receive. And that's what felt intuitively aligned is that, yes, that's, that's what I want to feel. That's what I want to experience within me. I want to feel rich. I want to feel successful. I want to feel proud. So my intuition kept leading me down this path of investing money, receiving what I said, what I wanted to receive from it, but feeling inadequate, feeling like I wasn't good enough, feeling like I couldn't do enough. Like no matter how much money I spent, no matter how many programs I did, I would never actually amount to that level of, of accomplishment that I could see for myself within. And it just kept pushing me down. I was feeling like I was just getting like Socked side to side, side to side, emotionally, financially, like mentally. And even though I, I had clients and my business was still surviving, it wasn't thriving in the way that I just, it didn't make sense to me why it wasn't. I didn't understand what was missing. I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. And I think that was probably the hardest part was I went really deep into that sense of guilt of what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why can everybody else do this? It got so bad to the point that for the first time I went into debt in my business and growing up, I created this belief in my mind that debt is the worst thing ever. Uh, I'm working on shifting that, <laughs> but debt is the worst thing ever. You should never have debt. You should never buy anything without having the money in your bank account. Um, and, and I took out, I took out debt for my business in order to keep it going in order for me to continue thriving and growing and surviving in the way that I wanted to. And this felt like a slap in the face. This felt like I was doing something wrong. And it had been, you know, multiple years that I've been in this business and I still couldn't figure it out. I'm going to pause for just a second. And I just want to know what, what are you feeling or receiving or experiencing within this? What, what, what is showing up for you? Just comment in, share with me what's real for you right now. What can you feel in your body right now in this conversation, in this story sharing? Mm. Carrie said, I understand feelings of inadequacy. Yeah, they're, they're really unpleasant. They're not, they're not nice. I don't like them, <laughs> but they are strong. They're very strong. <clears throat> Pamela, I was there with you. We just didn't know each other then. Oh, Pamela. Yeah. We were just dishing the money out, just wanting desperately to have that well, for me, that impact and that influence and that richness and that sense of like, I can do anything, desperately wanting that. And it just wasn't coming in. Anyone else? What are you feeling? What are you receiving from this? What's present in you right now? And remember that as we have this conversation, this is about shifting the narrative around money, around how we can speak about money, around just, just pulling back the curtain because money is just a tool. It is not something that needs to have emotional power over us anymore when we start choosing the opposite. But I just, yeah, I just want to hear from you. What's true in your heart right now? What's true in your body? Devin shares, feeling like I'm not alone. I feel these feelings often. Thank you for this. Oh, Devin, you're welcome. I'm sorry that you feel them as well, but, but I'm grateful that we can share in this together because it's, this is one of the things that in the online business world, people don't talk about very much. And if they do, it's like, and now I'm making seven figures every single month. And this is how I did it. Here's your process. And that was a bit rude. Um, while, while I believe them, I believe that, that that process did get them there and it did help them. Then it was amazing. I just think that we need to pull the curtains back a little bit more to show the things that we went through in order to get there, to show the pains that we went through. Because being an entrepreneur is not a freaking joy ride. <laughs> There's a lot of challenges that come with it. It is incredible. I would never change it for anything. I don't ever see myself going back to an, a typical job, but man, it can be challenging. So thank you, Devin, for sharing that and for, for feeling seen in this. Carrie, I often feel like I'm not getting what I hope for. Personal growth is hard to see. Oh, that's a, that's a strong statement. Yes, it is. 
And Tina, I'm feeling, why isn't my business where I want it to be yet? Oh, Tina, do you have any idea how many times I've talked to my husband about that? Like, how come you're more successful than me? Why can't I be where you are? Da, da, da. It's just, yeah, I got you. Thank you for sharing that. And Devin, yes, Carrie, we can understand in our mind, but that doesn't mean it actually integrates into your soul. Mm -hmm. Pamela, exactly. As a law of attraction coach in 2012, everyone else seemed to have it figured out, but me, that has been such a big narrative in my freaking head. Everyone else has it figured out. Everyone else is clearly better than I am. Everyone else can make money like that. Why can't I? Mm. And Monica, Acknowledging how far I've come in regard to my money beliefs with lots of credit to you. Oh, thank you, Monica. That's one of the incredible things about being a coach is you can hold space for others through something, even if you're going through it yourself. I mean, good coaches will push their things aside and show up and be of service to their client in that way. So while I was going through this myself personally, Monica, you and I were working together and it served you deeply. So that's beautiful, beautiful to hear and to receive. Okay. I want everyone to take a nice deep breath. Reach up. Reach 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 oh let it go yeah okay mm. so what changed what shifted what did i do what occurred what happened was one day i just somehow i don't even know why something triggered me i think the pain was deep enough that i got really real with myself and i got real with who i came here to be meaning my soul. Like, who am I truly and why am I here as opposed to what do I want? So not what do I as human Deanna want? What does personality Deanna want? But like, what is my purpose? What am I here for? That's what I started exploring. That's what I started wholeheartedly diving into. And while this version of me that I saw this, this soul version of me, while she may be rich, she may be successful, she may be abundant, prosper prosperous, she may have a massive following and a big impact. While all of that were kind of tangibles that could occur, they had nothing to do with the essence of it. They had nothing, nothing to do with the foundation of this vision that I saw of Deanna as soul, Deanna as my soul essence. And I started to realize that all of those things that I was craving and searching for and like grasping to receive were not necessary for me to show up and be who I'm here to be. I realized that having all the money that I wanted didn't actually make a difference as to whether or not I could have an impact on others. And, you know, having a massive following actually didn't matter when I wanted my words to have an influence on other human beings. You're here right now. There's there's 10 of us together right now, and that's incredible. Why does it have to be 10,000? I started asking myself these questions. What do I really want in this? Why am I seeking this? What am I grasping for? And I started deeply, like deeply exploring this future version of myself, of my true authentic soul self, not what I thought I wanted, but who I truly am here to be, my soul essence, that feeling inside of me of the truth of who I am. And one of the things that I noticed was that while she may be rich, successful, whatever, she might have those things. I don't know that yet. But one thing I know for freaking sure is she definitely had a deep, strong, unwavering commitment and bond with herself, with her soul self, with her true self. She was not willing to give that up. She was not willing to not have that. And I could feel it in my body. And I'd known this for years. I had known for years that my resistance to having a strong spiritual practice in the morning was my fear, was my ego holding me back. And I started to finally see this in the light of, uh, I'm not allowing myself to be who I'm actually meant to be. I'm so focused on receiving external validation and receiving external Mm, approval and external riches and external success and fame. I'm so focused on that. I'm not even creating space to come into the truth of who I am. And I realized that if this version of me, this soul version of me definitely had that deep, strong commitment and bond to her true self, then if, if I wanted to create any change in my life that I had to start there, there's no other option that absolutely had to be where I started. I started noticing that this version of me was deeply embodied in love and feminine flow, which I know for a lot of you, 
the way that you see me is embodied in love and feminine flow, which a lot of the time I am. But of course, there's aspects of me that you don't see. You see me when I come here online. You see me with what I choose to post. But there's a lot of parts of me, some of which I've shared today, where I'm not in that flow, where I'm struggling to get back in that flow. And so I realized that this future version of me was always in that flow. She found her way to it like that. And no matter how much money or influence she had or she gained or she received, she always, always, always trusted in her own wisdom. And she knew that it was that trust that moved her forward, not the promise of riches, not the promise of fame, not the promise of influence. It was her own internal trust. And that's when I realized that my intuition that I'd been listening to for these investments was, it was, it was fake. It was fucking fake. It was my intuitive sensation inside of me that it, it felt right. But what that vision that I was holding was solely based on my ego, was solely based on who I wanted to become in order to fulfill my own insecurities. Remember when I shared with you that I was bullied as a little girl? Of course I wanted to be liked and loved by everyone. Of course I want a mass following to try to fill that insecurity from that time in my life when I wasn't good enough as I was. Of course I want that. Of course I want all the money in the world when I prided myself my entire life on spending no money, on being frugal and cheap, and that was how I got affection and love. Of course I want all the money in the world so that I can prove that I've made it, right? And I realized, like, this was the, you guys, I don't know if you can feel this, but this was the first time that it was like I actually saw myself for who I am as a soul instead of seeing myself as a person. And everything changed. Everything changed. I stopped focusing on, okay, what are the business programs I can do? What are all of the, what are all the ways that I can um, post every single day? How can I curate all my content so that, you know, every day on Instagram at the same time, I have the, a similar post going out. I let go of all of that. I let it all go. Let it 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 go. And I, I took hours away from working on my business and I poured them right here beside me on this floor. I poured them into myself. I poured them into my heart, into my soul, into my meditation, into my chanting, into my EFT, into my exploration, into my journaling, into my everything, into me, not my business, not my impact, not me as a coach, me, me. This was the first time I'd ever done that. This was the first time I ever made myself a true, real, honest commitment to my soul. Mm. I finally realized that I didn't actually fully know what my intuition was because I had never fully embodied or experienced what my soul energy felt like. Your intuition is are these beautiful soul messages coming from your soul, your soul level, your soul layer. And they flow in through your intuitive layer to your physical layer so that you can understand what you're meant to do, so that you can have that guidance. Well, I was so caught up in my own mental level, in my own emotional level, that the intuition that was flowing through me was getting so like jibber jabbered, caught up with this vision that I had of me being rich and famous and successful that it felt like true intuition, but it wasn't my true intuition because it was so skewed based on my personality, and my ego. And it wasn't until I dedicated, like dedicated this time to exploring my soul energy and not just learning about it, but experiencing it, but like feeling it, embodying it. It was from here that I finally was able to understand the difference between my soul intuition and my sneaky disguised ego intuition. And suddenly everything made sense. I now can receive opportunities to invest money. It happened just the other day where I was like, oh my goodness, this program sounds so amazing. I definitely want to invest in this. Okay, $5,000. Okay, $5,000. Does that feel comfortable? Do I want to invest this? How's this going to look? Et cetera, et cetera. And then I paused. I came into my soul. I allowed my soul to feel into that energy. And I realized that the reason that I wanted that program was based on past patterning, was pay based on, okay, I want to get rich and successful. Okay, I want to be seen by all these people. Okay, this is how I want to receive that. This is how I'll be proud of myself. And when I realized that, I thought, oh, look, there's that pattern. Okay, nope, don't need that program. There it goes, no problem. And it just became so much easier for me to see it with clarity, that difference between soul intuition and ego intuition. When I learned more and more about the truth of myself, my true self, 
I learned in my soul that I am abundant beyond my wildest dreams. And you've probably heard that before, but have you ever felt it? Have you ever truly embodied what that means and how that can feel? I started to learn that my joy and my happiness doesn't come from anyone or anything out there. I'd heard that before, but I'd never felt it. I never embodied that before. I started truly understanding that it comes from within. I started, huh, uh -huh. I started no longer letting my spiritual self and my spiritual practice be something I do on the side. It's like for those of you who have ever worked in um, uh, a direct marketing company and you know how it's always like, oh, it's my side hustle. It's my side gig. But really, you want to make a lot of money at it, but you're treating it like your side gig. This was the same concept. I was treating my spirituality as a side piece of my life. And like my business is my main piece, but the spirituality is a side of it. But it doesn't even make sense considering the fact that my work is spiritual. And so I finally was like, Deanna, come on, girl. Like, you better put this in the forefront. Make sure that every conversation you're having is touching in on this. Make sure that every morning you are sitting on that meditation mat. Make sure that every single day you are connecting into the truth of your soul and not focused on the outcome that you want to produce in the world. Instead, you focus on how can I be of service today? Who am I to be of service today? How can I be in the energy of love and light today? And from this experience, my life has genuinely transformed. I am a completely different person. I'm completely different. It, I may seem the same to you. I don't know if I do or not. But my thoughts, my experience of life, my decisions, my sensations, everything is different because I now know how to tap into that truth. It's been, it has been absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. One of the things that I noticed that's very, very popular, and this is part of why I wanted to share this with you is, um, this happens with me too, a lot of us are willing to read all the books and learn as much as we can about spirituality. We want to learn about meditation. We want to learn about soul energy. We want to learn about yoga. We want to learn all these pieces. But have you, have you ever read a book and thought, oh my God, this book is going to change my life and you finish it and it's so good. And then like two weeks later, you're like, huh. I haven't really done any of those practices I said I would. I haven't, I haven't really, my life hasn't really transformed. And you happen to notice that perhaps the book and the, the teachings and the lessons were life-changing and yet you did not embody them. You simply learned them. Have you ever experienced that? I can't see you put your hand up, but maybe put like an emoji in there. Give me a dancing girl emoji if you could feel that, if that's happened to you, please. Mm, Pamela, I muscle tested every single dream course. Mm, interesting. Carrie, ego is very, very clever. It is deceitful. It's yeah, it's very clever. It's a, it's a survival mechanism within your ego and it's very resourceful. Uh, Carrie, nice to meet you, Deanna. Thank you for that, Carrie. And Brittany, yes, 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 yes. I've definitely witnessed the shifts and you've inspired these shifts within myself. Oh, Brittany, thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. And Devin, Dancing Girl, yep, Pamela, some love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys have read the books and yet still somehow your life hasn't transformed. Cool, me too. <laughs> what I found when I started putting this um, spiritual exploration to the forefront of my life, of not of my business, but of my life, was that I no longer needed to feel silent or, or I, I harbored this like almost shame or guilt around it. Like just because everybody in my life isn't as spiritual as I am means that I should probably hide it and not have these conversations or, you know, I, I, some people don't have the same beliefs, so I should probably keep it to myself. Or, um, when I go and do my meditation, I'll just, I won't tell anyone what I'm doing. I'll just say I have an appointment. And I realized like why I was holding myself back in so many ways. And I started saying, no, I am a spiritual being and this is my practice and this is how I show up within it and this is what it means to me and you can wait over there. I'll meet you for breakfast at 1030 because I need two hours to myself in the morning to get into the zone of my my soul energy and my soul frequency, okay? And it just became this whole new practice of allowing myself to be present with what was true for me. So I want to know what you've received from this. I want to know what you're taking away, what feels real for you, what feels true for you, maybe even just in like one to three words. Share in the comments right now, those of you watching the replay too, what are you receiving from this? What is real for you? What is true for you inside of you right now? What are you taking away? Comment it in 
right now. I'm going to take a nice deep breath and I just want to receive all of this from you and hold that space for you to fully embody it. I just slashed myself. <laughs> hmm. Carrie says discipline and commitment. Carrie, those are two words that I used to hate as the uh, free flowing feminine goddess that I am. I thought discipline and commitment are bullshit. I don't need that. Mm -mm, not for me. And that was before I started exploring the difference, the differences of masculine and feminine energy and how we balance them together. So I'm really glad that that's what you're picking up on because discipline and commitment are very, very important. And, um, Mm -hmm, beautiful. What else, ladies? Keep them coming in. Share with me. What are you feeling in your heart? What are you receiving from this? Even if you haven't commented yet, share one word or one emoji of what's something that you're experiencing and feeling and receiving from this right now. Monica, intuitive guidance will never feed into fear. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. It never does. And just for the record, um, just so you guys know, all of these investments, I've only shared two of the investments that I've made um, that didn't pan out how I wanted. I actually have multiple. I have a lot, but I only wanted to share those two with you today. Um, I don't regret them. I do not in any way regret investing that money. And to be honest, I don't think that even if you could offer me that money back right now, I don't think I'd take it. I would no, I wouldn't take it because I learned valuable lessons within that going through the agony and getting down to that rock bottom of it. So I don't regret the decisions at all, just in case anyone's curious, because I think it's important that we don't live our life with regrets instead that we see what we can receive from it. Um, Pamela, you are magical devotion to soul self. Mm, we are all so magical. It blows my mind in the most beautiful way every day. Devin <laughs> knees. <laughs> I meant oneness, not knees. Okay, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, ladies. Okay. So for some of you, you might be just thinking like, okay, cool. This is amazing and I'm receiving something from this and it feels good. But I know that there's probably also some of you that are thinking, awesome, D, that's so great. I'm so happy for you. I still don't freaking know how to do it myself. I don't know how to connect to my soul. I don't know how to get to that place. Who do I hire for this? If I can't read the books anymore, then what do I do? Is it, do I listen to podcasts? Do I, what do I do? Like, what do I do? Because if you're like me, that was something that I always struggled with. That's why I read all the books. That's why I did all the courses. That's why I hired all the coaches. I wanted someone to help me do it. I wanted someone to help me understand my soul, my intuition, my own inner self. And that was the biggest thing that held me back was not even knowing how to get the support that I needed and wanted. Because like I had, like I've shared with you, I'd invested so much money and tried so many times. It was kind of that idea of, is it really worth doing one more? Do I just give up now? Should I just stop? Clearly I'm not good at this. And that's what I think for some of you is probably something that you're experiencing now of how do I know how to step forward from this then? How do I know what feels right? And I have something that I want to share with you that I want you to genuinely feel into your heart and ask yourself if this is real for you. And coming from that place of now knowing that there is a difference between soul energy and ego intuition and ask yourself with so much grace and love, what feels real and true for you? And if that's still super unclear, I can help you out afterwards. We can have a few conversations or send some voice notes to get clear. But what happened was about... Um, Eight weeks ago, maybe, probably about eight weeks ago, I was sitting right here beside me uh, in meditation and it was incredible. It was a deep, juicy meditation that I don't, I don't always get into that really deep meditation, but this one was so good. And I came out of it literally scribbling on a piece of paper with this whole concept for something that I've created called the intuition series. And the intuition series is a program that I just ran for the past five weeks and it's been incredible. And as I shared with you, I am a completely different person now than I was last year. And I could really feel that shift and embodiment in the delivery of this course. This is different than anything I've ever taught. For those of you who are in the Empowered Woman series, that's an incredible program. This is like pff, completely different. <laughs> this is, it's just it. Mm -hmm. So this program, I have come to realize through the women that, that went through it with me and through the experience that I felt within it has the ability 
has the depth within it to help you get to the place where you know what your soul energy is and you know what your ego intuition is so that you can differentiate between those two. I witnessed, there were four women that went through this program with me and I witnessed the shift and the change in them and it is incredible. And I want to share just a few pieces of it with you right now, because for some of you, this is going to be the way for you to start understanding how to come into that soul energy. Okay. So I just want to share something right now. There are two things, two things, two things within five weeks of doing this program. One of the women, one of the women told me, oh, told all of us on the final call that everything that she wrote down as her affirmations or her soul energy affirmations from the very beginning, by the final call, she had witnessed in her reality that she had actually started to embody every single one of them. She was careful to say, I haven't embodied them fully because that's how we do. Because as humans, we're fearful that we don't want to, we don't want to do it all too much. However, she tapped into it. She knew how to start embodying each one of them. And from that very first day, that's her soul energy coming forward. And she is now on her way to fully embodying that every freaking day. That just blew my mind. And another student shared that she has been, her whole life, she's felt very different. She's felt very outcasted from her family and her community. I can relate to that. I have a feeling some of you can too. In these five weeks, for the first time, she shared that she feels comfortable in her own skin. <laughs> she, 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 I can't even. As someone who's always felt like I never belonged, that she shared that she now knows that no matter how witchy she is, no matter how different she is to everybody else in her family, in her community, in her life, it doesn't mean anything negative about her. She doesn't have to change who she is. She, she believes in herself. She trusts herself. And it's not because of the program. It's because she connected to her soul energy. It's because she connected to that essence of her that is fully abundant and blissful and prosperous and amazing and everything that she's wanted. She started to see herself through that lens and that's what created that change. And one final thing I want to share about it. On the final call, one of the women said, Deanna, can I interrupt you for a second? And I said, yeah, of course, go ahead. And she shared to one of the other women, you look different. You're glowing you look different and you're happy. I can see in your face that you are happy, which is different than when we began. She could see that her face had started to change. She could see that her eyes looked different, that she could see more clearly, that she had this glow about her and she had just come off a work shift as well. When we start committing, like even how I shared, when your spiritual practice becomes the forefront of your life and not just something you do on the side, this shifts your energetic frequency. It shifts the vibration in your body and that makes you look different. That changes who you are. We are literally just molecules of energy that are appearing to be solid. And that means that we are so malleable. Everything can change when you connect into your soul energy. Okay. So I have, I'm curious if you're open to me sharing a couple of the modules or some of the things that we go through in the intuition series. If you need to leave right now, I'm going to share something with you in case you're like, this is great, but I really have to get back to work or do my thing. This is where you can go to get more information about the program itself. So go ahead and write that down or type it into your phone right now. So you can check it out after if you have to go. But I just want to take a moment if you guys are open to it and share with you just a few a few, a few tidbits of the program. Oh, and of course, um, the price is only $444. Remember how I shared that everything that I've been investing in has been $4,000, over $10,000, American dollars, all of these large investments. It was really important to me that this, I want this to be accessible. And of course you get lifetime access to all the modules as well. So it's this, this is about you connecting to your soul. This is about you coming into the homecoming and the awakening that is accessible to you like that. Okay. That's what this is about. That's what this program is all about.
Hmm. Devin shared, it's amazing. Devin was just in the intuition series. So she is now an alumni and she also has access to all of the modules for the rest of her life. Devin, I'm so glad that you shared that. If you have any, anything else that you want to share about it, I would love to hear those words. Carrie says, um, tapas, self-discipline, tapas from yoga training. Yes. The yamas and niyamas discipline is spiritual. So beautiful. And Pamela air force life, always the new kid trying to fit in. Yeah. So you experienced that too. Mm-hmm. And Pamela, yes, please. Oh, and she shared the link. Thank you, Pamela. Bit.ly slash intuition series one. Okay. So very briefly, I'm going to share with you. The intuition series is, as I shared, completely different than anything I've ever taught before. It's five modules that you can either do all at once. You can do over five weeks. You can do over five months. Although I recommend not more than over five weeks because you don't want to get too far away from it, but you have access to all of it right away. Every single module is a 90 minute video training session that comes with some printouts that you can have with it, as well as it's teaching, but it's embodiment. So we take a lot of time to pause and come into your body to experience what you're feeling, to tap into that soul energy, to revisit your soul's alignment every single class. And of course, there's journaling and, and chance to ask questions and all sorts of resources in that way. So some of the topics that we cover are the five layers of self. You heard me talk today about the soul level and the intuitive level. Those are some of the five layers. We talk about self-energy healing, learning how to use your own natural healing capacity within your body to heal your body. We learn about the chakra system, how to cleanse our chakras, how to make sure that they're all circling in the right direction, a specific chant and meditation to help cleanse and release any stagnation. We learn different types of, or we talk about meditation and chanting and share some of that with you. You learn about divine symbolism, which is such a sacred practice and something that's so, so important in my life. You learn about sacred objects. Um, you probably saw me post about how a white feather represents my mom who's passed coming and being present with me. That's a part of exploring divine symbolism and sacred objects. Um, you learn and create your own health and wealth frequency, which is um, incredible and a super powerful tool to help this become an everyday practice. You learn how to hold your own personal ceremony. I even actually give you an outline. It's super gentle and loose, but an outline for you to follow. So every full moon or new moon or change of season or when something big happens in your life, you can hold your own personal ceremony. You learn how to release physically stored energy in your body that is creating blocks and stagnation. Super important for empaths to be able to keep continuously releasing, release it, releasing and letting it go. And the list goes on. So if you want a full breakdown of all the modules, just go to that link that I shared bit.ly slash intuition series one. It actually outlines what each of the five modules are, what we go through in them, et cetera. So that's more of like a, 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 bra a full breakdown. As I mentioned, there's two more things I want to share. Everybody who, everybody who signs up, everyone who becomes an alumni, you get lifetime access. And the reason I do this is you're going to fall off course again. You're going to connect to your soul energy in this program. You're going to awaken, feel incredible. And then time's going to go on. Something's going to happen and you're going to feel yourself shift backwards. I want you to feel supported in that moment. And I want you to have resources that you can turn to immediately without even thinking to get you back on track. I want you to go through these trainings as many times as you need to. Even if you did this twice a year or three times a year, trust me, your life will continue to transform every single time because you'll receive something different every time you go through it, which mm, I love. The other thing is everyone who joins receives two specific bonuses. And one of those bonuses is very direct where people keep kept saying to me, how do I know the difference between my soul and my ego? And that's a lot of what we talked about today, but I recorded a video training directly on that. So that's one of the bonuses. That's not really a part of the program, but you're going to receive access to it for signing up for this week. And also a sacred healing ceremony. A sacred healing ceremony is my own unique, beautiful blend of combining the incredible healing power of Reiki life force energy with the amazing mindset support of a yoga nidra meditation, pooling that together with chanting deep, deep relaxation and surrender to allow you to rewire your neural pathways, to believe in yourself, to trust your intuition, and to heal all parts of your being that are not in alignment. It is 
profound. It is incredible. So you receive the recording of this, which you can do at any time. You can include that into your personal ceremonies as an incredible way to awaken to all of those, those pieces of you. Okay. And then the final, final piece, the final piece, the first three women that register for this program, I'm going to give a complimentary one-on-one -on -one Reiki session too, because I want you to receive intuitive guidance and energetic healing immediately when you start. So within the month of July, you and I are going to have a Reiki session together. So if you want to be one of those three women, if you're feeling the pull towards this, this is that link again, bit.ly slash intuition series one. <sighs> It honestly has been the thing that has changed my life. It has been the thing. Even just creating the program has changed who I am as I experience life, as I show up. And I'm really excited to share it with you. So if you have any questions whatsoever, I want you to comment them below or send me a private message if you prefer. And I'm going to answer all of your questions as soon as I can. I love you so much. I'm grateful for you sharing this space with me. I'm grateful for you being here with me. And I cannot freaking wait to see who is going to join in the intuition series so that I can hold that space for you and you can receive everything that you need to come into your soul energy. I love you. Hmm. Now I have to find the button to get out of here. Here we go. There it is. Found it. <laughs>